So today I wanted to continue our work with the 75 grain Hornady boat tail hollow point with a cantaloupe. Now in the last video we were just having some fun. I tried a whole bunch of loads and powders that you guys recommended and we shot some pretty good groups. So what I want to do today is take one of the powders that shot really well, a Liant AR comp, and I want to shoot it at a bunch of different overall lengths today. So that'll let us try to duplicate the results that we saw in the last video plus see how our overall length is affecting the situation. My biggest frustration with this bullet so far has been trying to find a seating stem that fits the bullet. This is a Hornady seating stem for the 75 grain ELD and the contact that the stem makes with the bullet is just not very good. And the same thing with the seating stem that had come in my 22 die, just not at all a very good fit. So we're having a very small contact area on the bullet and whenever we've even had lightly compressed loads, we've been getting a ring around our bullets. So today I would really like to figure out something better here so we can get a little bit more consistent bullet seating. Now the one I used in the last video for most loads was this Forster Ultra Micrometer seating die. And this is its seating stem. I love these dies, but I've had issues with a couple of these stems cracking because you can see how thin they are. If you start going crazy shooting compressed loads, you can crack these guys pretty easy. And I actually think this one is cracked somewhere, but it was good enough to give me the best consistent seating in that last video. Now I've actually got a couple Lee seating dies, one out of one of their, their little, uh, the green sets. And I've got another one that comes from one of their collet die sets. So I thought this might be a really good candidate for a bullet seating stem that we could screw up. Now, if we look at their, the standard Lee stem with this bullet, it's, it's pretty bad. But the interesting thing about this one, when compared to the other stems, is the contact it's making is right at the tip of the bullet. I've actually got one, let me see if I can find it. If you can see some shiny marks and stuff right there at the tip, this is a bullet that I had put down into one of these and like twisted to kind of get a feel for where the contact was happening. There we go, there's a little bit more. And I might have pushed a little bit too hard because now it's there. But whatever, you kind of get the point. That's what we're starting with. So we've got empty space that we could fill with something to make it a better fit. Now I've heard of people using hot glue, like just filling this with a hot glue gun, pushing a bullet down in there and calling that good, all the way up to like DevCon, this plastic steel putty that you use for like betting an action in a stock. So I decided to try something kind of in the middle. This is the quick setting JB Weld, yeah, quick weld stuff. So steel reinforced epoxy. So I mixed up some of this, got some down in there, and then I used the press to try and get things aligned while the epoxy set up. So with a piece of brass in the press, raised up pushing on that bullet, I just left it sit like that. And this is what I ended up with. I actually didn't quite get enough in there. There's one section where it didn't make it up there to the top, but now if we take our bullet, it is an absolutely perfect fit. So now the problem is we've got this seating stem with a perfect fit to our bullet. It doesn't really leave any room for self alignment. If we take the standard stem, if things are a little bit crooked, maybe it at least kind of has the opportunity to self align. I'm not sure if that's going to be a problem or maybe the JB weld is going to be too soft and this is not going to be effective. I don't know. Let's test that first and see what the results look like. So what I've done is weighed out a ridiculously large amount of AR comp into five pieces of brass here. So I want to try, you know, seeding into a heavily compressed load with both stems. Okay, so I'm using a dummy round to get our die set just about where we want it. So first, let's see what happens with the standard stem. Very crunchy. Honestly, doesn't really look too bad. I'll switch out to our other stem, set this one to the same spot with our dummy round, and then seat this one. Okay, so the one on the right is with the standard stem. If I can get the, get the glare just right so we can see it. It's really not too bad. Then this is the one with our custom stem. And it looks really good. All right, so this contraption is the Hornady Concentricity Tool. 
you put a round in here like this, and then you spin it around and you read the dial to see how much wobble it's got. So we don't have a whole lot of room to work here before we get to the can lure, so yeah, doing the best we can here. Now this is one of the ones I used to set up the die, so I've, I've loaded these previously. So we're seeing a total of two thousandths of run out. Yep, right about that. Here's another one that was also loaded in that same batch. That one looks a little bit better. So like maybe one and a quarter thousandths or one thousand. And here's a third one. That one also looks to be right about a thousandth of an inch. All right, so here's the one I just seeded with the standard seeding stem. Remember, now this is a heavily compressed load where those others just now were not. So it looks like this one's about three thousandths. Those others were also, you know, seeded with a completely different die. Yep, so this first one with the Lee has three thousandths. Now this is the one with our new custom seeding stem. Yeah, we're seeing almost four. Hmm, that's not good. That's not good at all. Let's seat some more of them. So for this batch, I added a little bit more powder. And I am way up into the neck now. So extremely compressed. And another thing I'm going to do is the old trick where you kind of get it started. Then you drop it and let's turn it 90 degrees and seat it the rest of the way. Now at this point, this charge is insanely compressed and the, and the bullet looks awesome. So we fixed one problem, just got to make sure we didn't cause a concentricity issue. All right, here's the first of these three. That's certainly an improvement. So a total of one thousandth. See if we can see about where we're hitting the bullet. Yeah, good. Okay, let's see what the next one is. It's like this one's just at a thousandth as well. Maybe just a little bit more, but yeah, right at a thousandth. All right, here's the last of these. Wow. Now we're back to four. Very, very interesting stuff. Now the problem is I don't really have, I've been meaning to buy a nice concentricity tool where we could also just measure the brass without the bullet. I've got another, let me see if the other one I've got will give us more options. So I think I've stepped in a really, really deep hole here. So this is, this is an RCBS uh, case master. Yeah, this this was my grandfather's, and you know that one with the the one with the four thousandths of run out, it, it pretty much agrees with it, getting very similar numbers, if not maybe just a little bit worse. It's measuring more like four and a half. So they operate quite different. Where this one has the V blocks that the case sits in, and then the Hornady just makes contact at the front and the back. So they're really measuring different things. But if we take the one that we say has about four thousandths of run out and adjust it so that it's reading the, the neck rather than the bullet. Well, it turns out most of that run out was probably caused during sizing, maybe, because the problem with that measurement I just took is that this brass has never been neck turned. So any thickness differences is gonna show up in this measurement. So this hole is very deep and I've been, it's been like an hour since I filmed that last part. I've been sitting here thinking like, okay, what do I do? Does this now become a concentricity video? Because now that I think back, a couple things make sense. So the brass I used when I, you know, loaded this one that's given this a ton of run out is that same batch of brass that I'm pretty sure we used in the first video we did on this with this bullet. That's the video where we had a lot of flyers. Now the last video where we shot the 19 different loads, we didn't have those crazy flyers quite as much. I might be chasing my tail because we're not gonna shoot this brass today. What I've decided I wanna use is brand new Lake City brass. Never been fired. We'll proceed with the overall length tests. 
which have we even got, I haven't even gotten to that part yet, right? I haven't even really explained what today's video is about, but we're gonna do a bunch of overall length tests and we'll use this new brass. But what I'll do, yeah, so we'll, I'll load all these up and I'll spin them all on the concentricity gauge and I'll mark the worst ones and then we'll just track them and see if they end up being flyers. And then what we'll probably do next is step back all the way through our brass prep in the next video and pay really close attention to the run out as we go. So yeah, that's what we'll do. But hey, back to the original topic. Now we've got a seating stem that fits the bullets really well. We'll figure out if it's inducing run out later. So just to kind of finish up that topic of the seating stem, this is the bullet I used in the mold. And it was pretty tough to get out. I, I used neutral shoe polish as my release and it was having a really hard time coming out of there. I think this is why. So our, our hollow point got a hold of some of that and brought out a little bit of extra with it, which I was really happy to see because, you know, I was afraid I was going to have to drill out that, that part of it because, you know, with, with bullets of this type of construction, we're going to have some irregularities there at the tip. So we don't really want a precise fit right there, right? We want a little bit of room. So hopefully that, that's enough. Okay, the load data for today's video. Obviously, we're shooting the 75 grain Hornady. We're shooting new Lake City brass. We're going to shoot CCI 41 primers. We're going to shoot 22.9 grains of AR comp. I've got the RCBS Charge Master Light set up and throwing that. So this charge gave us 2732 feet per second in the last video and a 0.59 inch group at 2.250 inches of overall length. So that velocity is pretty good. We, we could probably go a little bit higher with AR comp, but not much. Hopefully this will be a good load where we're not tearing up brass and stuff like that. The other thing I did want to do for today, if we're going to shoot this load here for a little bit for some testing, I'll go ahead and adjust my gas system because where I've got it now, I'm a little bit over gassed with with some of these higher velocity loads like this. So we'll try and get the gun running smoothly and then we'll just test all of these different overall lengths. We'll start at 2.260 and we'll just go shorter in three thousandths increments, which takes us to 2.233, 10 groups. This three thousandths increments is what uh, Eric Cortina is recommending. So I've had 8 million people ask me to, to do it or incorporate it into some videos. So here you go. And then as I mentioned earlier, every, every round before we shoot it, I'm going to check it for concentricity and we'll make note of the ones that are the worst and we'll track whether or not they prove to be flyers. All right, that sounds like fun. Brand new brass, so I'm ready for primers. I have already chamfered the case mouth on these and we should be ready. Okay, so I've skipped forward to bullet seating. And this is kind of going to be a pain in the butt because while the lead die seemed like the best one to make a custom stem out of, it is not a micrometer adjustable die. It's, it's very easy to adjust, but there's no like, you know, index to help you with your counting. So actually I need to back this out just a little bit. I think a little bit ago I had it at 2.250 ish, somewhere right around there. Now what I've done is I've weighed out 15 extra charges in our crappy brass that we think has the concentricity problems. And this is what I'm going to use to, to make my die adjustments. And what we'll use this ammo for is whenever I need to adjust my gas system because I do want to get it dialed in today. So I'm just going to start at 2.260, which we're pretty close already, 2.262. want to seat a second one and see what it gives us. Okay, that one's also 2.262, so this will be a good first test I go because we're going to be going down three thousandths between tests. So let me see how much that'll give us. I'm not sure what the threads per inch are here. I didn't quite go far enough. All right, I'm gonna roll with that. Seat both of them. May have already screwed up here. Nah, I just have one that's a little bit. So one of them is 2.259, the other one's 2.254. Let me see what the cartridge-based ogive measurement is. The first one here with my Hornady tool is 1.884. So I'm gonna write that down if I can find my pen. Or I guess I should measure the other one, make sure it agrees with that 1.884 number. Yes, it does. So let me seat one of our real tests and see what it does. Now I'm not gonna do the seat it halfway, turn it 90 degrees stuff that is supposed to help reduce run out. Cause long-term, like I don't wanna do that all the time, right? I just wanna seat them like normal. This is ammunition for my AR. Adding time to my final procedure is annoying. All right, 1.884. I just wanted to double check because this is, is brand new brass while this has been fired. So it has been fired and annealed, but I thought that uh, 
yeah, thought it might make a difference. Just wanted to double check. All right, so my next target is 1.881. See where that puts me. No, not quite. Okay, I think I got it, 1.881. So that one goes into our gas tuning batch and I seat five at this setting. You get the idea. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up and then I'll check in whenever I'm spinning them all for run out. So I checked the run out on all 50 of these and found something ridiculous. So like the first row, which is our longest ones, 2.260, had one of them with one thousandths of run out. There's a two, a three, a four, and then another four. And all the ones that, that were fours marked the tip so I could you know, easily identify them. We did have one five. Yeah, so this guy had five thousandths of run out. So in total, I had seven that had four or five thousandths of run out. The last four rows, which are our shortest overall length, the concentricity improved dramatically, dramatically. I'll try and figure out some way to put like the numbers on the screen. It went from every single row had a healthy dose of crappy ones, and then as soon as we get this short, all of our problems go away. The only thing I can think, now the last four rows get past the cantilure and start engaging with, you know, the bearing surface between the, uh, you know, the cantilure and the start of the ogive, the last little flat bit there. And if we look at like the, the shortest ones, that's how much we've got left. So that's the best theory I can come up with right now. Man, I am so confused. I, I, I'm so confused. And I'm trying to decide whether to scrap all of this crap that I've been filming and just start over because Today's test is nothing like what I thought it was going to be. It's going to be a really interesting test to see what these groups look like though. So, all right, I'm going to keep thinking. I'm not going to shoot these until tomorrow. So this is going to, yeah, I'm going to be thinking about this all evening. So, all right, let's get out to the range. So I've had the night to think things over and I still have no explanation. I did not expect what we're seeing here, but I think our range results are going to tell us a lot. Speaking of the range, my target is at 100 yards. Garbage up here is the shot marker electronic target system. Velocities will come from a lab radar chronograph. And up in the very top right hand corner of the screen where it says zero shots right now, as the groups come in, you'll start seeing velocities up there. That is velocity at the target. So I saw in the comments of one of the previous videos, somebody had mentioned that they didn't understand why the velocities I was talking about were different from the ones on the screen. So that's what's going on. The big ugly black box over there is where, where I'll fill in our muzzle velocities. And that's mainly what we worry about most anyway. This gun is an aero precision upper parts with a white oak armament barrel. This is their 18 inch SPR barrel. This is the one in seven twist with a rifle length gas system. And I'm shooting with a Silencer Co. Omega suppressor. And speaking of that, I've already tweaked my gas system. This is what I had out here and I had to take my suppressor off every time to adjust it. And I was too lazy to go in the house and get something that could work around the suppressor. So you didn't miss much. This is a superlative arms adjustable gas block. And it's been a long time since I touched it and it really adjusted easily. I was surprised. So I've got it eight clicks out from totally closed, which is the minimum I found to reliably lock the bolt back. I only took four shots, so I might still need to make a click or two. That's what we could do first. I've still got 11 left of the ones from setting up the die. So, eh, whatever, screw it. Let's just get into the real stuff. Now here's how I'm gonna load these. The worst run out for each group is gonna be the first one into the magazine. So that'll be the last shot we take. And I'm gonna load them all that way. So if the poor run out is going to affect things, we should see the groups, the groups open up toward the end. All right, let me arm the chronograph. So our first group here is at 2.260 inches. So let's see what happens.
Well, that's better than I thought it might be. 0.87 inches is not a bad start at all. Average velocity 2728, standard deviation 12.0, extreme spread 26. Now the, the runout numbers on that group, the first shot had one thousandth, the second had two, the third had three, and then the fourth and the fifth both had four thousandths of run out. So this group, you know, it had our worst numbers. I was really expecting that we might see that fourth and fifth shot fly out into nowhere and be some of the flyers we've been experiencing in the previous videos. Didn't happen. Oh, almost loaded them backwards. There we go. That's the right way to do it. Okay, next is 2.257. Good deal. Same group as last time, basically. So what I'll probably do at this point, so, well, I mean, we can talk about this group. So this is a 0 .80 inch group, velocity 2718, standard deviation 7.4, all that crap. The runout numbers were one, two, two, three, and four. So once again, no predictions of flyers coming true here on our second group. So I think this is, you know, basically just going to be more of the same, right? I just need to bear down and shoot some groups, and there's not a whole lot to say about it. So that's what I'll do. I'll just shut up, do some shooting, and we'll do our analysis afterward. Don't screw it up. Don't screw it up. I screwed it up. That was a good shot. That last shot that screwed up that group was the worst run out of the entire day. That was the five thousandths of run out shot. So what is this test telling us? Run out doesn't matter? Or that it's super duper critical and just screwed up my itty bitty tiny group? I don't know. How important is an itty bitty tiny group to you, I guess, maybe, might be the question you have to answer first. So pretty stoked about how this is going so far. Okay, so these next four groups is where we get past the can lure and that run out improves dramatically. So this is where those start.
I can't think of any of my videos where the results have surprised me more than this one. Like this is a pretty darn good target. And my, my eye is immediately drawn to that third, fourth, and fifth group from 2.254 to 2.248. I think it's hilarious that our, our best results were right there at Hornady's recommended overall length. So conventional wisdom says that 2.254 should be our winner because it's the longest overall length in that good group of three. And as the throat in our chamber erodes and our jump to engage the rifling gets longer and longer, it shouldn't matter too much. And even if we go farther to the sixth and seventh groups, like those weren't too bad. The sixth one just got a little bit funky, but you know, not too bad at all. So if you look at it that way, then we've got 12 thousandths of our good window. So was it worth doing 10 groups with only three thousandths increments? In this case, it was fine because I mean, honestly, this represents about the whole window we've got. If I don't want to go longer than magazine length and we can't really seat that deeply before the ogive gets to the case mouth, it really, you know, wasn't that annoying. You know, we only covered 27 thousandths today, but that's what we need. And it gave, gave us a very zoomed in view of how things were going to work. You know, we know about how wide our seating depth node is or, you know, or so that's what we're told to believe. And I believe that. Now, if I was also shooting this bullet in my bolt action rifle where I didn't care about overall length or you know magazine length, and I wanted to test all the way from 2.3 inches all the way back to 2.2 inches. Now in that situation, I think that first range trip should be bigger chunks. But you know, if back to today's target, our ninth group, the worst one of the day, 1.19 inches, you know, the group on either side of it looks pretty good. Now, assuming this is a real and repeatable a bad spot, place we want to avoid, then of course, absolutely. It would take adjusting in, you know, these uh, 3000 increments or even less. Let's say we like, we, we found nothing but garbage. Like they all sucked except for one or two. Then maybe we got to zoom in even more. And I, that, that may be something we try. So I'm, I'm kind of, I don't know what to do next. Cause I could, the next video probably needs to be one where I really carefully step through brass prep, looking for run out problems. And, you know, talking through all of the things I'm going to check and verify to try and get to the, to the root of what we saw today. That's probably better done as a separate video just on that topic. But as far as this bullet goes, I'd like to take our, you know, our good overall length from today. So let's say 2.254 and then load up some different charge weights. One to, you know, see how much more velocity we could get out of AR comp before we run into problems and also see whether this combination of powder and overall length is accurate across a bunch of charge weights. I also want to go back to, you know, the last video where we shot 19 different powders. I want to pick one that didn't perform well and run today's test again with it. Like I want some crappier groups. I want a crappier combo of powder and bullet to see if we can work toward an acceptable load for that. Maybe we'll learn more through that process than we did here with AR comp, which it's, you know, it shoots everything good. All the groups we shot today were still pretty good. You take this bullet, this powder, put them in the vague shape of a loaded round, put them in my gun, you're gonna shoot one inch groups. Easy, magical combo, right? So let's go with a non-magical combo and see where we can go from there. All right, there's a hundred other things that I like. I wanted to mention in today's video. Like it, it's been a while, it might've been the first video. Let me rearrange my camera. The 75 grainer with the cantalure and this one, move out of the way, there we go. The standard Hornady 75 grain boat tail hollow point without the cantaloupe. I don't know why I didn't pull these out and compare them in the first video, but like I thought these were the same bullet and we just had the cantaloupe version. That is definitely not the case. Look at that transition to ogive from bearing surface on our cantaloupe version and compare it to the other. You know, they're pretty similar as far as, you know, total bullet length and that sort of crap. Man, I can never get the right angle. I just moved my bench and the new lights, I'm still getting used to them, getting the right shot I'm after. But yeah, you see that, that sharp transition and then with the standard 75, it's a much more gradual change. So I found that pretty interesting. This is the 75 grain ELD. And if you look at it, like totally different length boat tail, to totally different everything. So these are three quite different bullets. So if you're taking any guidance from this series in your selections, make sure you're careful. So I also really skimmed over a lot of, you know, the main topic of today's video, our little custom seating stem, 
seem to have worked fine. At parts of the video, you might have seen marks on some of the bullets of the loaded rounds. That was from this Hornady tool. The part that holds the bullet ends up leaving a mark on the bullet when you spin it. So everything seems good to go with our, with our Lee seating stem. And I think that's probably enough for today. Can't wait to read your comments on this one. Help me understand what the hell happened here. Does run out matter? I'm sure it does. Why in this situation didn't it matter? You know, in an earlier video, somebody had, had, had mentioned that their results were different than mine and, and they blamed their 5.56 five, chambered guns. Like, so, so maybe that's it. Maybe the 223 wild chamber of my white oak armament barrel is just particularly good at straightening out concentricity issues and not allowing them to affect it. Maybe I switched to a different gun. We go to 300 Win Mag or something and maybe these exact same readings would have been extremely obvious on paper. I don't know. It's not something I've ever wanted to obsess about. That's why you've never really seen me talk that much about it. I wanna follow the best practices in reloading that I know should help reduce run out, but I don't wanna be measuring every stinking round. But somewhere along the way, I definitely screwed up and I wanna know where and I wanna know how to fix it. All right, that's it for this video. See you guys next time.